The Greek gods and goddesses are some of the most famous in all of ancient mythology. Of these, however, a small group stands out. Known as the Olympian gods, these 12 gods feature prominently in Greek myths and stories. One of these gods is Ares, the god of war. In ancient Greek mythology and art, Ares is always adorned by a golden helmet and bronze armour, his powerful fists emphasised in his stance. Depending on the artist, Ares is either a bearded, mature warrior or a nude and beardless youth who carries a helm and spear as his symbols. He is often depicted driving a four-horse chariot accompanied by dogs or vultures. Ares was the Greek god of war, a true wild child who personified the spirit of battle and warfare. Son of Zeus and Hera, Ares was reckless, bloodthirsty and brutal, representing all the worst and most terrifying aspects of battle. Understandably, this made him pretty unpopular, and even Zeus, Ares' father, would have banished him to the pits of Tartarus if he weren't his own flesh and blood. Among his many derogatory nicknames, there were War Glutton, City Sacker, Shield Piercer, and even Curse of Men. He was the first child of Zeus and Hera, and had a further three siblings, Ilethia, Hebe, and Hephaestus. Athena, the goddess of war, was his half-sister. Ares is the Greek god of war and courage, but Athena shares a similar title as the goddess of war and wisdom. They are two sides of the same coin. Ares is the chaos and destruction of war, found in the middle of the rage and pain of fighting, but Athena is strategic and calm. She is the general, guiding the battle and waging the tide against her brother's chaos and destruction. Ares is the most feared and hated of all, yet only possesses men of courage. Humans cannot see him, but they recognise the god of war in the storm clouds that hovers over their enemies on the battlefield. He can be controlled by none but Zeus, and although the gods live in balance on Mount Olympus, Ares is forever known for his tempestuous nature. Unfortunately, because he was such a handful, neither of his parents nor his family particularly liked him. He even caused conflict between his own parents. Zeus accused Hera of mollycoddling Ares and blamed her for causing his terrible behaviour. In the Iliad, Zeus says to Ares, Hera's urgings, I trust, have made you insufferable. As if to add insult to injury, in all his myths, Ares suffered a series of humiliations and defeats, even at the hands of his own family. One of the worst was during the Trojan War. Typically, Ares was up to no good, and he chose to side with the Trojans instead of his Greek counterparts. This meant he was fighting against his friends, parents and sisters. He almost helped the Trojans win the war, but he was stopped by his own half-sister Athena, who struck him on the back with a sharp rock, causing grievous harm. The reason Ares' myths all end badly is because they sent a moralising message to ancient Greeks that mindless violence and aggression are a sign of weakness and failure. Instead, Athena's calculating, intelligent approach to warfare was encouraged. According to the Iliad, Zeus had little time for Ares and his troublesome ways. During the Trojan War, when Diomedes wounded Ares with a spear, Ares went straight to his father to complain. In response, Zeus said, Do not sit beside me and whine, you double-faced liar. To me, you are the most hateful of all gods who hold Olympus. But Zeus stops there, remembering Ares is still his own son, eventually adding, You are my child, but you were born of some other god, long since you would have been dropped beneath the gods of the bright sky. Given that Ares was such hard work, perhaps it is no surprise that he never married, but he still had several love affairs and fathered many children. Ares famously had a love affair with Aphrodite, the Greek goddess of love. Aphrodite was still married to Hephaestus at the time, so they were doomed from the start. When Hephaestus caught them in an intimate embrace, he trapped them in an invisible net and invited all the gods on Mount Olympus to come and gawp at them to cause maximum humiliation and embarrassment. Ares also had love affairs with Eos, the goddess of dawn, and Enyo, the goddess of war and strife. Ares remained the most important god when it came to actual battle and bloodshed. In poetry, warriors were referred to as henchmen of Ares. On the island of Corfu, the grave of one Arniadas, who died around 600 BC, had a three-line hexameter with a reference to man slaughtering Ares. This is the tomb of Arniadas, whom flashing-eyed Ares destroyed as he fought beside the ships in the stream of Arathus. He was the bravest by far in the wretchedness of war. Similar epigrams all emphasise the ferocity of Ares as a god of slaughter. 
Such descriptions are interesting because they give us some insight into the nature of warfare in ancient Greece. It was bloody and chaotic, and seemingly marked by indiscriminate killing of brave men and cowards alike. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you liked this video, and if you really enjoy it, please support the channel through the super likes button found under the video. Till next time, yours truly, Mythos the Historian.